Okay. Uh, this Brazos County Commissioner will meet in a workshop session as follows. This is uh, July 27th, 10 a.m. MPAO uh, and RMA meeting, Brazos County Administration Building, 200 South Texas Avenue, Suite 106. First item is called to order. The second is presentation and discussion re regarding the county uh, becoming a co-applicant on an MPO uh, lead joint application for a action plan grant. Dan. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming. So uh, at the request of my technical advisory committee, um, we have been asked to consider doing a Safe Streets and Roads for All discretionary planning grant uh, from the federal government. So the Safe Streets and Roads for All program was included in the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. Um, if you talk to anybody at the federal government, they call it the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law. So I just wanted you to know if you hear IIJA or somebody mentioned Bill, B-I-L, it's the same thing. It's just that the federal government for some reason likes to call it that. Um, so the Safe Streets and Roads for All program is intended to support the national roadway safety strategies. Um, and it funds local initiatives to prevent uh, deaths and injuries on roads and streets. You may have heard it, they call it here in Texas Vision Zero. The Texas uh, Transportation Commission calls it Vision Zero. Other states call it Toward Zero Deaths initiatives. But the Safe Streets and Roads for All program has about a billion dollars available for FY 2022. The interesting thing about this grant is that state DOTs are not eligible for this grant. Only MPOs, local governments, transit authorities, tribal governments, and what they call multi-jurisdictional groups of applicants, or what they call joint applicants, which is what we're planning to go for with this grant. Um, it's not required, but it's strongly encouraged by Federal Highway Administration to do a joint application. So I'll be doing the same presentation to the City of Bryan, City of College Station in August. Um, there are two types of grants. Um, there's a comprehensive safety action plan grant, which is the one that we will be going after, and then the implementation grant, which is um, providing you money to implement whatever strategies you select in the comprehensive safety action plan. Um, they originally only wanted to award implementation grants that were identified in a safety action plan, um, but they realized that most localities, except for the major urban areas, don't have such a plan and they want it to be very specific and comprehensive so they said okay we'll give money to localities to first do the plan and then once they have the plan they can come back and say all right you've completed the plan here's the strategies you've laid out you can't afford to do the implementation of that come back to us and we'll give you another grant to do the implementation of the plan so first step do the plan second step apply for implementation grants at the local level. So basically what we would be doing um, is uh, following this plan process that FHWA has spelled out. So first there's a leadership commitment. Each one of the applicants and co-applicants needs to adopt a resolution. Um, I drafted a resolution and presented it to Prathana. Um, so the resolution has already been done for you. It probably just needs to go through legal review. Um, and make sure you're comfortable with it. Um, the way that they want the plan to be done is they want uh, an oversight committee appointed um, and they want somebody to serve as champion. So I was basically voluntold that I would be the champion uh, for the Safe Streets and Roads for All grant program um, and that's why I'm here before you today. Um, so some of the things that we do as part of that, we set goals, we do in a pretty in-depth safety analysis we engage the public to make sure that we've got the strategies in place that they feel comfortable with. Uh, we look at making sure that we distribute what we're trying to do equitably throughout the community, make sure that we're not uh, bypassing underserved communities as part of this grant. Um, and then the outcomes are we select specific strategies and we prioritize the strategies that we look at. Now when I talk about the strategies, it's not just uh, let's fix an intersection. Um, there's typically four E's with these things. Uh, there's engineering, education, encouragement, and enforcement. There's usually a 50, which is evaluation, but that's required as part of the grant process. So we would, uh, we would create strategies in all four of those E's and put in applications 
for those at the local level. So the minimum grant uh, that you can request is $200,000. Um, and that's because they are talking about a truly comprehensive safety action plan, not something that I as an MPO director can sit down and write over a, a three month period. Um, it's a pretty involved grant. Um, they have to look at certain data um, and they have to provide a short narrative as part of the application process. Um, and then there are four things that the grants are, are evaluated on. The number of roadway fatalities within, in our case, Brazos County between 2016 and 2020, what the fatality rate is per 100,000 population, uh, the percent of the population in Brazos County that is defined as underserved by the Federal Highway Administration, and then safety considerations, which is described in the, in the narrative. Um, the Secretary of Transportation will then look at all four of those categories and set a specific level. So let's say he chooses 90 fatalities between 2016 and 2020. Brazos County had 94 fatalities between 2016 and 2020. If the cutoff is 90, we get the grant. Um, if the annual fatality rate is greater than 7%, if that's the level he picks, um, Brazos County was 7.78%, we would get the grant. You only have to qualify for any one of the four. You don't have to qualify for all four of the four. So that's how the grant selection process works. Um, I reached out to Texas A&M Transportation Institute, and they've estimated that doing a joint plan in Brazos County would be about $260,000. So that gives you an idea of how large the grant would be. So think about it, a uh, $200,000 minimum grant request um, and 20% has to be a local match. Um, so you can do the math, which gets me to my big asks, which are first, um, the county would need to adopt a Vision Zero resolution, which uh, as I've said, I've provided to Prathana to look at. Um, you would need to commit to a $20,000 local match. I'll be asking the same thing of City of Bryan, City of College Station, so that we get to the $260,000 level that um, TTI is suggesting. Um, and the other thing that I would ask is that you provide me five names to serve on an, over, on an oversight committee and allow uh, your TAC member to also serve on that committee. And the types of people that FHWA is looking for to serve on that oversight committee are bicycle and pedestrian advocates, the sheriff's office, fire departments, somebody from the disability community, business leaders, and then anybody else that's a, a safety advocate or human service agencies that do a lot of safety work. And with that, I'll take any questions that you have. You're asking for 20,000, but it would be 40,000 for a 20% match. So I'm asking 20,000 from the county, 20,000 from the city of Bryan, and 20,000 from the city of College Station. So that would be 60,000. We would ask for the $200,000 minimum match it with the $60,000 that we got from the three jurisdictions and have enough money to do the grant. The, the 260000 that's for a study that would be done by a consultant or would TTI do that? We were you? hoping that because TTI has volunteered to do or to write the grant for us and um, the MPO would submit it through the county, um, that they would then because we have the Center for Transportation Safety at TTI here at yes. Bryan College Station, I can't think of anybody better I to do the to do the, to write the grant or to write the plan for us. I will need to reach out to members of staff to make sure that that's allowable for somebody to write a grant for us and then say, okay, here you wrote it, you do it, because I think we have to go through a particular procurement process. But I have to follow up on that. What? Uh after your plans there, you still, let's say we get approved for the 260, what would be the type of projects and things that we would see in the community that would uh, uh, be addressed? I mean, just kind of, I mean, okay. not specific, so, but so just. Basically what they have to do is look where accidents are occurring. Okay. Um, and then determine if they're automobile versus automobile, automobile versus pedestrian pedestrian versus bicyclist, they have to look at all of that. They come up with specific recommendations on what kind of strategies we use. Um, I wanted to give you, I, th I thought about it 
unfortunately, while I was on vacation. But I, I thought about a couple of examples that would not be, let's install a traffic signal at this location and this will fix the problem. Um, research has shown that when you lose a $50,000 year employee, it costs you $50,000 to replace that employee plus the $50,000 salary you're giving to the new person. You've got the person um, backing off from their work responsibilities as they get ready to leave. Other people have to take their place and they get displaced a little bit. You have to do the recruitment. You have to do all of that. So it's kind of a $50,000 to replace a $50,000 employee. It's much worse than that if you lose an employee in a traffic fatality it comes close to double. So one of the things that we might do is do a uh, education series for businesses to explain to them, hey, you know, you're, you're part of this too. Um, and here's how it affects your bottom line. Help us be advocates for improving traffic safety in Brazos County. Um, ex a second example that I've seen done is a very interesting one. Um, they invite business CEOs to come to a meeting um, and then they slowly give them drinks. They test their driving acuity on a computer simulation before their first drink, after their first drink, after their second drink, and after their third drink. And they show them how much their driving uh, acuity has changed over that time period. And it has a very big impact on the CEOs when you say, now imagine this with your employees. How many could you potentially lose because of this? So there's just different ways that you can do these kind of things. And those are the kinds of strategies that if you decide to do those, the uh, Federal Highway Administration, once you have that safety action plan in place, can fund the implementation of doing those kind of programs. Well, I know that uh, AgriLife's got a real big presence in uh, community education. Uh, for those types of things like you were mentioning as far as impaired driving and uh, even to the point of where you do the uh, virtual reality goggles at a you know crash scene type of thing I mean they've got some pretty impressive uh, ways to communicate that and those kinds of things aren't aren't cheap to, no. to do no. and so that's why the implementation grants are available yeah um, well I mean it, it uh, I think this is from looking at funds that are available that are not necessarily available uh, through uh, state departments of transportation in the uh, uh, infrastructure act uh, it, it uh, there's grant access to these funds is going to be an essential uh, so uh, I mean th this to me this begin looks like it uh, uh, we're, we're beginning a uh, long collaborative working relationship relative to acquiring those funds and, and I will say that if either one of the two cities backs out then I would be I would come back before you and say hey one of them chose not to participate do you still want to participate When are you scheduled to make this presentation to the cities? Uh, the week of August 11th. Thank you. And I'm not ac asking for any action today, just that understand that if you decide to participate, I would need a resolution, uh, your commitment to the $20,000 and some names. Our, our um, auditor would like to speak to you. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. Um, <laughs> um, what plans do we have if TTI is not able to help write the grant? So when I approached TTI about the cost of the grant, um, I said, how much assistance would you be willing to provide for the grant? And they said, we'll write the grant, you can review it, and you can submit it. I said, okay, what's the minimum amount that you would be able to do? And they said, we'll write the grant, you can review it and submit it. Sounds good. So they're totally on board. And in fact, they, right. Deb Albert was supposed to be here from TTI to tell you that herself, and she got called away to another meeting, so. Okay. We will take your word for it, that sounds good. So I guess they would take a look at where maybe most of the accidents, the deaths are actually happening, occurring in Brazos County and Correct. maybe rank them and then take a look at where the something. What, 
What, yeah, exactly. What they'll do is they'll look at uh, where all of the accidents are occurring in Brazos County, see if we can identify several hot spots in the county, and then using those four E's, determine which strategies would best address those specific locations. Good. So it, it could be a traffic signal, it could be an educational program, it could be, hey, the uh, sheriff's department or one of the city police department needs to better enforce speeds at this particular location. It could be a wide variety of things. We don't want to presuppose when you're doing a big safety plan like this. Right. Okay. Is it possible to have your report uh, graded into the different precincts? That way we'll know if that's better. If that's what you request, then I'm sure TTI will be able to I do that. I would like to know. Uh, and I think it would be helpful for the other commissioners to know. Yep. There's a wide variety of ways that you can put together the plan and, and do the data collection and doing it by precinct would, would, would certainly be just very simple exercise for TTI. Thank you. So if you have any additional questions, uh, I'm around quite a bit. I'll see you tomorrow afternoon at your future of Brazos County Transportation meeting, but uh, you know how to reach me. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And then three is presentation overview of updated Brazos County Regional Mobility Authority, period. Good morning, Judge, Commissioners. Good morning. Thanks for having me this morning. I think this is my first time speaking to you as a body, as the RMA Chair, so grateful to be here. I will be pretty brief. Uh, you should have this handout at your spot. Um, <clears throat> really today, I, I just wanted to give you an update on what we've been up to uh, as the RMA board uh, and, and individually, and then I, I do have a couple of asks at the end of my presentation. Uh, the, this commission has been an incredible partner uh, for the RMA, and so you are all, I, I think, more aware than probably anybody else in the county about what we've been up to, but again, I think this is a, this will be a good update. I provided this to both cities and the Texas A&M University, uh, to the chancellor's office. Um, and uh, and made this and some similar requests to them. So the document in front of you is what we call our philosophy and plan document. Uh, this is the RMA's plan for November and beyond. Over the last 12 months or so, we've had uh, multiple meetings with both cities, um, county, both staff and, and electeds, as well as the system to determine what we think are some actual projects that the RMA could take part in moving forward. Uh, obviously, there's, there's going to be a referendum on the ballot in November, and we think it's important that the community understands here's what this referendum means, and here's some projects that we actually intend to, to take part in. So that's this document. The first couple of pages uh, are some history on the RMA. Uh, I think it's important to point out page three. Um, you know, we've, as, as a part of the creation of the RMA, had our, our transportation vision statement signed by 16 local leaders, um, many of them in this room. Uh, we think we're the only community in Texas that has anything like that. Uh, that much collaboration between county, cities, uh, ISDs, economic development, university system. We think that's really important. Uh, and then page four and beyond talk about the specific projects, which, which I'll highlight. So the, we, we split them up into a near-term, a mid-term, and a long-term project. Uh, the near-term project that we identified from, from conversations with the different uh, stakeholders was the intersection of Arrington Road and William Fitch. Um, if you spend any time in South College Station, you know how congested that intersection gets multiple times a day. And fortunately, through conversations with TxDOT, we've determined that that project, that intersection probably doesn't require, well, let me, let me rephrase this. We could relieve a lot of congestion at that intersection without a grade separated uh, interchange. And so think about some of the, the Michigan lefts, or I, I think there's another a more technical term for them on 2818, but something like that at that intersection uh, could relieve a lot of congestion for a much less significant price tag than, than a grade separation. So that's kind of what we've identified as our near-term project. 
Our midterm project is developing plans for access to in and around the Rellis campus uh, in the western part of the county. Um, if you've if you've driven from downtown Bryan down 21 to Rellis, you know that it can be tricky to get into. Uh, we, we, I was as we as we've been talking about this project, a lot of people have scratched their heads about that because they don't spend a lot of time at Rellis. And I probably had 15 people call me after the uh, the Fourth of July event. Uh, at the Rellis campus saying, man, it's it is really tricky to get in and out of there. Uh, you think about Riverside campus seven years ago compared to where it is today. Fast forward another seven years, nobody expects it to, to slow down. And so access in and out of that gateway to our community, I think is going to be really important. So that's our intermediate term project. And then the long term project is, is initiating planning work on the East Inner Loop. Um, Right now, the East Inner Loop is a line on uh, the MPO's 2050 master plan. That's that's really all it is. And and just to orient you, the East Inner Loop would start um, on the south end of the county at William Fitch and Highway 30, run up the east side of the county and connect at 2818 and Highway 6 on the northern in the northern part of the county. So, not the uh, not the on the MPO plan, not the blue outer line, but the purple inner line. Right now, it's a it's a line on a piece of paper. We think the RMA can take a lead in uh, in some route identification and some environmental studies uh, to figure out how we can move that project along uh, a little bit more quickly. So those are the three projects th through again multiple meetings with the cities, uh, the county, TxDOT, Texas A&M, really came to the to the surface as as the bigger projects that we can work on. Uh, on page five, you'll see a map of the three projects. And, and then other things that came out of those meetings, which I thought were really valuable, were some you know, what we're calling um, leadership initiatives uh, that the RMA can take. And so those are outlined on, on page six. I won't go through each of them uh, in detail, but uh, public outreach, which is what we've, we've really been doing for the last year, um, met with a number of Rotary Clubs, uh, Lions Clubs, uh, you know, professional organizations talking about the RMA, what the RMA is, what we're, what we're going to potentially be able to do. Uh, continuing to do that public outreach, looking at, uh, at transit service in the county. Um, we've, got, we've got two uh, fairly significant transit providers in the county. Uh, and just continuing to look at, at what the future of transit in Brazos County looks like as we continue to, to grow our population. Uh, concepts for pedestrian, uh, bicycle routes, uh, looking at leveraging funding that may be available, for instance, the federal infrastructure bill, how can we leverage not just potential funds that may come from a, a vehicle registration fee referendum, but from other sources uh, to expedite these projects. Uh, looking at, uh, at potential issues and uh, impacts of Union Pacific double tracking, uh, which I think we all think is, is probably, uh, if not imminent, it's, it's soon to be. Uh, and then looking at autonomous vehicle uh, sites, uh, autonomous vehicle routes in the county, um, and then also electric vehicle charging facilities. I, I um, feel like we're seeing more and more of those. I, I notice them popping up uh, all over town. I see more and more electric vehicles all over town. And so just identifying ways that we can make sure that we are preparing for, for that changing uh, dynamic in electric vehicles. So, so that's the philosophy and plan document again uh, a lot of work has gone into this uh, from both uh, Dan and Lisa uh, our board members I know we've had uh, you know I think the counties and the cities and, and Anna may be getting tired of us calling saying hey we didn't want to have another meeting about this but it really has been helpful uh, the amount of feedback the amount of support that we've gotten from from our partners uh, I do have a couple of asks uh, and updates as we figure this out and this is the first time for for all of us doing this we learn new things every day one of the things we learned recently was that assuming that there is a vehicle registration fee uh, that goes to fund the RMA those funds uh, cannot cover administrative costs of the RMA they have to be project focused and so we've identified uh, about a hundred and twenty thousand dollar annual budget if for administrative costs that we would need to that we would need to fund and so what we've done is is asked each uh, each of the four partners the county both cities and Texas A&M University system 
to contribute $30,000 a year annually to cover those costs uh, for the RMA. And so that is something that uh, will maybe be a, uh, maybe call that a provisional ask uh, as you know, if we are able to get the, the referendum through and the vehicle, vehicle registration fee to fund the RMA, that will likely be something uh, that we will need, need some support on. And the other thing is, uh, you know, we, we anticipate that there will be a referendum on the November ballot, uh, and we would like as much vocal support as we can get um, from the community for, for this document. Uh, and so I have asked both cities, uh, the Texas A&M University System Board of Regents, uh, for a resolution to that effect. Uh, and so if it's the will of the commission, um, I would certainly appreciate a, a resolution of support of the RMA, what we're doing. Uh, again, this body has been extremely supportive and, and helpful and um, right there alongside us the entire way. And so I'm, hope, I'm hopeful that that's something that uh, this body would be willing to do. With that, that's uh, the end of my presentation. I, I'm also happy to answer any questions. Uh, I hope that you have some. Questions? Well, I, I appreciate the work that you've done, Barry, as well as the RMA board. Uh, you've been hardworking and, and done a great job, and uh, I hope we can see this through the finish line. Amen. Uh, have you thought about going back to the Twin City Endowment? Uh, we have not. Uh, we, we have not spoken to them. Um, they've been, obviously, a, a significant funding partner for us, and um, hope that that can continue but we have not spoken to them no ma'am the, the referendum what what steps do you have to take to get that uh... so the the steps the biggest step is uh, and this has been a, a source of uh, not confusion but learning um, is how that referendum should be worded uh, what vehicles should be subject to the vehicle registration fee uh, if you ask the uh, if you ask the five counties that have vehicle registration fee uh, that goes to the RMA, what if you ask those five counties what vehicles are included, you'll get ten different answers. Uh, there's not really any clear indication, and so what we've what we've discovered is it's really up to to us and to the commission to decide which vehicles are uh, are subject to the fee. I think that's. You know, there are, are a lot of people who have a lot of opinions on that uh, and I think we need to identify that but really that's the last big hurdle for us and then creating the language to to you know, to have this commission put on the ballot uh, this may be a question you don't know the answer to and we might need uh, Christy Rowe to answer it but do you know how many the difference between motor vehicles and you know, trailers kind of thing. I do not. I know there's 100, roughly 160,000 vehicles registered in the county. Uh, I have spoken, um, and, and Christy Rowe has been extremely helpful. Uh, the That's a, a Department of Motor Vehicles question, uh, and I have been instructed that the probably the only way we're going to get that information is through an open records request, um, which we're preparing to, to submit. Because uh, I, I know that some, some farmers <coughs> have a lot of trailers that you know they just put on the road yep. once or twice a year and as opposed to vehicles and you know the ten dollar fee could turn out to be a hundred dollars for them as opposed to twenty dollars for their correct their personal vehicles absolutely yeah, i think i think there are ways that we can carve out who and what and define that and that's what we need to do prior to the referendum because the referendum needs to have the background to explain that but yeah uh, you know particularly I'm, I've gotten some information from our tax assessor collector and I forward that on to uh, uh, Barry and to Dennis Christensen but I think we need to figure out okay so what is it how do we want to word this and where do we want this referendum to uh, apply and uh, if we, the big picture that I've seen so far was that if they're not subject to the county's road fee of a dollar fifty uh, that's on to that that pretty much uh, takes care of all of the non self propelled vehicles being exempt 
uh, but we need to get the clear definition on that specifically. And I, and I think personally, from my perspective, is, is you know, if, if it uh, can't get out on the road and drive itself, then I don't know that we ought to have a fee on, uh, you know, what's registered in the county for a token trailer or a farm trailer or uh, those I concur. types of things. I concur uh, with yeah, that. I mean, uh, that, that, that puts a, a, a little a, a more of an unfair burden, I think, on, a, on group, groups of people than others. And I think that the whole idea is, is you know, if you, can, if you can get into it, if you can start it and you can drive it, that that would be where we'd want to apply the fee because that's where the use is. Yeah, totally agree. Yep. Okay, all right. And uh, do would we determine that? Would we determine that with whoever's writing our referendum with us, or would we? Uh, uh, Come up with that because I mean, what's the process of clarifying all that? What do we need to do? Do we have a? a I, know, I know this is another first time, but we're, how do we get there? How do we get it defined? Yeah, that's that. That's what we're attempting to to discern uh, and to figure out. I, I think it's a conversation again with with the commission, the RMA board, uh, as well as you know, county attorney. Um, you know, potentially any sort of outside counsel and making sure that what that we put in the re referendum it abides by state law. Gotcha. But, uh, but from, from what I have, from what we have gathered from other RMAs around the state is that it's, it's up to us to decide what goes into the referendum. The next step. All right. Thank you, Barry. Thank you all. There's nothing else on the agenda, so unless there's any more discussion about the two items there, we'll adjourn.